Personal Finance PowerPoint Presentation Earnings Season Prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. Most of this information comes from Investopedia Earnings Season, which you can find online. Take a look at the references, resources, continue your research from there. This by Alicia Tavila, updated May 29th, 2021. In prior presentations, we've been taking a look at investment goals, investment strategies, investment tools, keeping in mind the two major categories of investment, that being the fixed income, typically bonds, and then the equities, typically the common stock. Now we're asking, what is earnings season? Earnings season refers to the months of the year during which most quarterly corporate earnings are released to the public. So obviously this is gonna be key if we're trying to track our investments now remember as you're thinking about tracking our investments we could have different strategies to do so for example we might be on a long-term horizon many investors for example might be investing under the umbrella of a 401k plan or under the umbrella of an ira they might be using tools such as mutual funds to do so and using a broad diverse strategy to have a long-term type of investment which means you might not be tracking the earnings for any particular company too uh, closely because you're betting in essence on the market overall taking a diversified approach to do so however if you're investing in individual stocks or you're investing in shorter time horizons it's more and more likely that you're going to be focused on the details in terms of what's happening on the underlying fundamentals of a particular stock of a particular corporation and there is going to be reported with regards to the financial statements and of course one of the major driving components of that is the earnings and they're going to release those typically on a quarterly basis so we're going to break down the year to quarterly basis and then we get our earnings uh, periodically throughout the year that everybody's going to then drive on to make their predictions and investments so earnings season generally occurs in the month immediately following the end of each fiscal quarter so we got the year 12 months uh, for the fiscal year we're going to divide it by four to get to the uh, quarters which are going to have three months quarters three um four three month quarters right this means that earnings season typically falls in january april july october now if you think about that of course that means that the first quarter of the year first three months january february march they've got to then compile the business does the data in order to then give it out to the public so that's going to happen in the following month in april and then you got april may uh, june which then that's the second quarter is going to be issued to the public after they compile that data in july july august september for the third quarter is then going to be compiled and published in october and then october november december the last quarter then is going to be compiled and given to the public in the following year january of the following year so because firms need time after each quarter quarterly accounting period ends to put together their earnings reports you can imagine on the accounting side of things you've got accounting departments going crazy by the end of the quarters because they're trying to get the information together so they can they can put it out there as is required in the following month after the quarter ends so when earning season when is earning season the unofficial kickoff of earning season is the release of earnings by alcoa that's the nyse new york stock exchange aa an aluminum producer as it is one of the first major companies to release earnings after the end of each quarter so you're going to say okay here come the floodgates after you see uh, aa now releasing their earnings it also coincides with an increasing number of earnings reports being released by other public companies so there is no official end to the earnings season but it is considered to be over when most major companies have released their quarterly earnings reports so there's going to be required dates through the earnings season and obviously as most of the earnings are reported once their major earnings reports have been out then you would think that would be going towards the end of the earnings season it generally occurs about six weeks after the start of the season for example for the fourth quarter you will often see an increasing number of earnings reports released in the second week of january alcoa typically releases at the start of the second week about six weeks later or near the end of february the number of earnings reports starts to decrease to pre-earnings season levels so there is also very little time between each earnings session or season for example 
earnings season earnings season for the first quarter begins in early April. So you got the first quarter, January, February, March. They're going to issue the information out, hopefully early April to get the timely information, which is a little over a month after the end of the fourth quarter earnings season. So although most companies are on a standard calendar year, some major public companies have fiscal quarters that do not correspond with a calendar year. For example, Walmart, New York Stock Exchange, WMT, has a fiscal year end of January 31st. This later fiscal year end allows ample time following the holiday season to, or uh, in order to fully capture all holiday purchases in year end profits. So in other words, some companies are going to be on the fiscal, uh, the fiscal year, but some companies might have some other year as opposed to the calendar year, and that might be in order to capture you know, the natural earning seasons of that particular company. For example, here, of course, uh, when you're talking about sales at Walmart, you would think that that would be uh, increased during the busy season for them, which would be basically the holiday season. So therefore, Walmart will likely release its earnings to the public toward the end of a typical earnings season. So earnings season and investors. Earnings season is easily the busiest time for the year, of the year for those who work in and watch the markets as virtually every large publicly traded company will report the results of their last quarter. So clearly if you watch the stock market, they'll be you know busy during that time reporting all the earnings of the different companies and, and talking about whether they hit their expectations or not. Analysts and managers typically set their guidelines and estimates to correspond to specific quarters or fiscal year endings. So the results reported by firms during earnings season often have a big role in the performance of their stocks. Clearly, what you're going to try to be doing on the investment side is try to predict what's going to be happening in the future, gauging your investments on them. And then once the reports come out, you're going to measure what you guessed to the reports. Some analysts like to calculate a company's earning before taxes, EBT. This is also referred to as pre-tax income. Taxes greatly skew the calculation of earnings because we have a progressive tax system, for example, or that's one reason. So uh, taxes you know, go up as income goes up. So sometimes you want to look at it without the taxes because that could be better for comparison sometimes some analysts like to see earnings before interest and taxes ebit ebit still other analysts may uh, mainly in industries with high level of fixed assets prefer to see earnings before interest taxes depreciation and amortization also known as ebitda ebitda all three measures depict varying degrees of profitability as earnings season approaches, many analysts will conduct intrinsic valuations to determine if the current market price of the company's stock is over or undervalued. So as we look at the, the fundamentals of the company, looking at their financial statements, then we want to say, okay, is the market properly valuing? Have they taken into consideration the new most relevant data? when we're investing in the market and when people are trying to invest, especially on the short term, they're always looking for the new most relevant data because that's going to be the driver to, that might give you kind of an edge on the market. So people are jumping on those earnings reports right after they come out when they're trying to maximize the profit basically in the short in the short run oftentimes. So this informs investors whether or not to purchase, sell or hold the stock. Fundamental analysts will look at the qualitative business model governance and industry factors and quantitative ratios and financial statement analysis aspects of a business. The discounted cash flow model is one commonly used valuation tool which relies on a company's free cash flow and weighted average cost of capital, otherwise known as WAC, W-A-C-C. Earnings calls. During earnings season, investor relations teams will set up earnings calls where the public can dial in and listen to the executive team describe the company's results for that quarter. So now we have the data and we've got the insiders basically interpreting that data or spinning that data depending on how you look at it. Topics generally covered during earnings calls include a discussion of financial performance, any management changes, changes in corporate governance, legal involvement, industry changes, and more. Many different measures of earnings exist and management usually discusses the context for a company's results. So they're going to try to frame the, the results and so on. Obviously, this is coming from management who, who wants to 
give the best light to the company. So you would expect that, you know, you have to take that into consideration in terms of how they might spend the data or present the data. The vast majority of publicly listed companies host earning calls, though smaller companies with minimal investor interest may be exceptions. So many companies also provide a phone recording or presentation of the earnings call on their corporate website following the actual call, making it possible for potential investors or those who could not log in to access this information.